Hello guys, welcome back to channel. I'm Kevin. Today we're going to talk about the VO2 Max, a number that we always get from our watch. How we do it, how we use it, and how we perform and how we integrate into our training. I'm not going to talk about the information, the VO2 Max from our watch. I'm going to talk about the numbers that I get it from the lab because I'm one of the test subjects for the Vitami subject at the University of Malaya. So that's why they're going to test my VO2 Max before and after. See with the vitamin you will improve my performance or not. During these 15 weeks, yeah, 15 weeks of testing will get before and after. Tomorrow is my before but this is the second supplement that i'm going to take so i'm going to get my before they definitely will get all this information out and we can see what's behind the vo2 max and how we able to get this number and train with it definitely i will explain much on this once tomorrow once i finish the testing and i will ask the doctor to help me to explain how the numbers look like and how we can improve is it i running too hard or I running too slow itself. So right now it's around 11 p.m. and it's for me to go for fasting until tomorrow for eight hours because they're going to take our blood also see how much vitamin inside our body before and after the period or so. So that's all and see you guys on the tomorrow UM. So good morning, I'm Kevin. Today we have the Dr. Kong. Dr. Kong. Yeah, Dr. Kong. Hi. Hi, I'm Dr. Kong. So I'm a senior lecturer at uh, Faculty of Sports and Exercise Sciences, University of Malaya. Okay, today I went here for some course, uh, vitamin E test, and in the same time, I've uh, went through the VO2 max. Can you explain some of the VO2 max, what data that we can get besides the number of the VO2 max? Alright, sure. Alright, so this whole test is actually called the cardiopulmonary exercise testing. So. Besides VO2 max test, we can actually do, or rather we can measure quite a lot of other stuff, like including your ventilation, so how much you breathe in and out per minute. We also have uh, how much oxygen, how much carbon dioxide that you use, that's actually falls under VO2, VCO2 as well. We can also measure your, hold on, let me just bring it up here. So we can also measure things like how much calorie you use. Alright, so the here, calorie per day. We can also set it up to show per minute or even per hour. It's up to us. Then there's also things like how much percent of your energy derived from fat or carbohydrate during the run. So from here, we can also calculate how much calorie you burn derived from carbs, how much calorie you burn derived from fat, or how much grams of carbs and fats you burn, among many other things. We can also use it for uh, clinical exam uh, evaluation but that's beyond the scope of this particular research lah. so uh, in certain countries where they have clinical exercise physiology they use this as an early screening for any cardiovascular or even pulmonary issue right so like for uh, for the interest of the sports people first and foremost you want to know what is your VO2 max right so VO2 max test usually is just off to 15 minutes can be done very quickly and like in well in Carlin's case so we can have a look at his VO2 max test so a very quick test can generate this kind of result lah. so he did a submaximal test it's only nine minutes and then we extrapolate to his maximum age predicted maximum heart rate so it's predicted that his VO2 max was uh, last week was uh, 59.4 which for his age group and uh, in the Southeast Asian population is considered superior. Superior. Yep. So besides, uh, doctor, besides these numbers, can we know about our aerobic base, the anaerobic base, or are we using a max capacity of our runnings or not? Alright. In a way, we can. So again, let me pull up your performance test earlier. Now, one value I like to bring everyone to look at is this uh, respiratory quotient or RQ in short. Uh, some textbooks will write this as just R or RER. They're not exactly the same, but a lot of textbooks kind of use them interchangeably. So long story short, you see these values here. When it's less than 1.0, you are basically in aerobic mode. When it's more than 1.0, which you can see here, he was at the borderline just now. 
so it's touching an aerobic um, threshold here lah. so if you are consistently above one then we can very safely say that you are predominantly anaerobic at that point so as he did his test on the treadmill we can kind of gauge at what speed uh, he enters an aerobic threshold at what or at what duration of run he starts to enter an aerobic threshold and so on and let me bring up the carbohydrate and fat again because most critically once you've entered anaerobic state so you can see let's see a bit all right so here there's a lot of you know a lot of R, rq value going above 1.0 so you can see once you're in anaerobic state you are predominantly using carbohydrate now mathematically it will tell you that you burn 100 100 of your energy derived from carbohydrate now in reality that's not true that's a limitation of the mathematical formula but what it does say is now you are predominantly using carbohydrate you're Carb predominantly using anaerobic in, in other words if you're going for a long duration event this is not great this is not great this is not great you i'm burning a lot of energy yes than my storage. and you're using a lot of anaerobic energy system which will leads to a lot of lactate accumulation so anaerobic threshold as we see from here you know if it goes 1.0 more than 1.0 you can it's also somewhat correlated to lt2 lactate threshold 2 for those yeah so the the ideal one is that you stay at roughly 0 0.95 why at this state you are still using both carbs and fat and you have not entered an aerobic state so you are not producing a lot of lactate so this should at least on paper be your racing pace it's yes. the fastest pace you can maintain without triggering lactate threshold so that pace i think i running around 13 point the you were at roughly 12 to 13 kilometers per hour yeah we did adjust there was some adjustment here at a two percent inclination so one to two percent is what we recommend because uh if you want to you know convert it to road yeah, because yeah. road is not totally flat mm -hmm, yes, yeah so right. studies have shown that one to two percent has the highest correlation to actual road racing mm -hmm. and that assumes you know normal flat road normal not flat yeah road. not on the trail mm -hmm. okay so yeah that's so like for your case 12 to 13 kilometers per hour now of course it still depends on duration because the longer you run the more r will increase or the, or the more anaerobic you tend to be as yes. well yeah but at least for you we know that one hour plus at 13 kilometers mm -hmm. you are still roughly you know at the at the, at the, sweet, sweet, at the, spot. At the sweet spot for race pace la. so for training should i for let's say for treasure like treasure anything should i push far faster or higher speeds it yeah. depends if you are going for tempo or heat you should go higher you should you should at least be 0 0.95, 0 0.95. La. if your goal is to push your wheel to max you want to improve your wheel to max and then your heat should ideally be above this la. so you can also see the heart rate here mm -hmm. so right. so at this uh you know, roughly 0 0.95 RQ or close to anaerobic, mm -hmm. you're actually around you know, 183, 184, which is origin already at your age predicted maximum heart rate. So you can see the age predicted maximum heart rate is not always correct. Because uh, from this test alone, you have already hit 187. Yeah. So those doing heat, those doing tempo, at least 0 0.95, like 0 because 0 .95. it should be right before lactate or anaerobic threshold to begin with. So that's how we can quantify it with this kind of test uh, yeah. or with this kind of device. Kind of device. Right. Yeah. Of course, there's also the mobile one you can you know bring on the bring field. On the yeah, field. unfortunately, we don't have it in this lab. All right. Okay. Besides that, thanks, thanks, doctor. Thanks for this information. Besides that, there's definitely one question that a lot of people ask. If let's say someone just want to walk in to get this kind of test, uh, did UM Faculty Arena here provide this kind of service? Okay, we do. Uh, but you have to email the faculty. Lah. Right. We do have a service division it's just that it's kind of inactive since okay. uh since the pandemic like we call it um4s so, yeah. um4s uh. sports science support service uh. so we do have that if i'm not mistaken it's roughly 200 per test okay. 200 ringgit yeah we also have it at the sports medicine clinic uh, sometimes sports medicine clinic will also send their client over here for testing okay yeah. okay good thanks doctor thanks to uh, all, all the information Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, thank you. See you.